strike slip fault systems are important tectonic components both in the oceans and the continents. Oceanic examples of transformed faults are apparently rather simple, connecting ridge segments. But in the continents, strike slip fault systems can be long and have significant structural complexity. These complexities can give rise to mountain ranges and sedimentary basins. Let's have a look at these features and how they relate to irregularities, that's jogs and relays, along strike slip fault systems. In the continent, strike slip faults are rarely straight for very far. So let's look at what happens at bends. So this cartoon is looking down on a fault system. The fault's in red and we can see that it's got a bend on it. In talking about bends on faults, imagine yourself stood at one end of this fault looking towards the other. And the fault bends towards the right. It doesn't matter which end you stand, it bends to the right. So we can talk about the geometry of the fault in terms of the sense of bend. The other critical piece of information we need to understand this system is the sense of movement. In this case, it's a left lateral fault. So the geometry we have is a rightward bend on a left lateral fault. So in the view that we're looking at here, look at the upper side, which you could think of as being the north side of the fault, and that's moving towards the left, towards the west. And as a consequence, at the bend, the two sides of the fault are pushing together. It's called a restraining bend, and this will generate compressional tectonics off the fault. This might be represented by folds or thrusts, and certainly morphologically on the continents will be represented by uplifted mountain ranges. Let's look at an example. So this is a satellite image along the eastern Mediterranean Arabian margin, more or less centred on the country of Lebanon. And running through this image is the Dead Sea Fault System. Here it goes. And this fault is accommodating left lateral movement because of the northward movement of Arabia relative to the eastern Mediterranean. So let's put the arrow sense on the fault. So the fault's got a rightward bend on it, and it's a left lateral fault. It's the same setup as we looked at on that cartoon on the left of the image. And that's picked out in the landscape by two mountain ranges, Mount Lebanon and the Anti-Lebanon. Here they are, picked out in green here. They're basically very large antiforms. And it's a classic example of a restraining bend with compressional off-fault deformation. Well, this geometry assumes that the fault hard links, in other words, it's a continuous fault structure along which displacement is largely conserved. You get a similar geometry if the fault is soft linked. So here we have a soft linked strike slip fault. It's also left lateral and the fault is segmented, the two segments linked by a relay ramp area. Terminology. These sorts of geometries are called stepovers, so this is a right stepover. We still generate compressional strains in the relay ramp area, so in other words, where the two fault segments overlap. In practice, in map pattern, it can be quite difficult to discriminate between these two examples, particularly if the relay ramp becomes breached with small offset linking faults. Well, let's return to hard linking faults and keep the same geometry but change the sense of offset. So rather than left lateral, let's make this fault geometry right lateral. In this case, the northern or upper side in this view of the strike slip fault zone is moving towards the right, towards the east. And as a consequence, on the bend, the two walls of the fault zone are moving apart. This will obviously generate extension and classically these are termed pull apart basins. An example of this sort of behaviour could be seen here. So this is on the North Anatolian fault system, one of the really major seismogenic strike slip fault systems in the world. Let's think about the tectonics and what's going on in here is that Anatolia is being moved around towards the west with respect to the top part of this view. And in this region, 
we've opened up a basin that is filled by the Sea of Marmara. Let's add the fault system on. On the North Anatolian fault, splays, it has a frayed pattern, splitting from the east into two western branches, a northern branch and a southern branch. And between these branches, we've opened up a basin. So if we connect the northern branch of the North Anatolian Fault further to the east to the main tract of the North Anatolian Fault, we can see that that bend is a rightward bend with a left lateral movement. So we have a pull apart behaviour for the Sea of Marmara. So it's a possible example of a pull apart basin. So that's a rather classical description of this style of tectonics. And if you look at the cartoon there, there's a classical relationship we'll often see described in textbooks that relates the opening of the basin to the amount of displacement on the fault. We can contrast this hard-linked behaviour with the soft-linked equivalent. So in soft-linking again, we have two distinct fault segments that are kinematically connected through a relay ramp and the basin is developed in the overlap zone between the faults. As we've just seen, for the interpretation as a pull-apart basin, the basin aperture or size relates directly to the displacement. In the relay ramp example, for soft linking, the basin size relates to the amount of overlap Although the pull-apart model is widely used in textbooks, you've got to view it somewhat sceptically because it implies that the basin is formed as a tear that propagates right through the plate. A somewhat unlikely scenario. So in many cases, it's the soft-linking relay ramp model that may be more appropriate. Let's see how this plays out returning to the Dead Sea Fault system. So here we are in Lebanon looking north along the tract of the Yamune Fault, which is one of the branches of the Dead Sea Fault system in this part of the world. And the contention is that what we're looking at is a small array of relay ramp basins associated with segmentation on the Yamune Fault. Let's draw in the interpretation and perhaps it will become clearer. So there we have the fault segments and a discontinuous irregular basin formed between three segments, the main segment coming in from the south, a discontinuous short fault segment in the middle, and then, and then the main fault system continuing off northwards as we look along the system here. The segment step left, it's a left lateral fault zone, so these are rifty geometries in the overlap zone of the faults in the relay ramps. We can see other examples if we look further south along the Dead Sea Fault system. So let's step out and look at its southern sector here. So we're looking down on the Jordan Valley, you can see the Gulf of Aqaba, the water body coming in from the south, and you can see the Dead Sea in the north of the image. And the Dead Sea and the Gulf of Aqaba are connected geomorphologically by the Jordan Valley that is just picked out by that shaded area. Let's look at this system obliquely. So here we are, you can still see the Gulf of Aqaba at the bottom there, and you can see the Dead Sea at the top, and in the distance you can see the corner of the Eastern Mediterranean. Let's take away the shading to show where the Jordan Valley is and look at the fault geometries and the associated basins. There we go, so we've got a whole array of overlapping fault segments and in these overlap zones we have the basins and the basins connect through at the Earth's surface to create the Jordan Valley. So the Jordan Valley itself is a composite array of relay ramp basins. Each of these fault segments is left lateral as is the main sense on the Dead Sea fault zone to which they relate and the array of faults step leftwards creating these soft-linking relay ramp basins. So that's a brief review of some continental transforms that are showing bends and overlaps. 
Understanding their geometry requires understanding three things. One is the degree of hard linking. Are we dealing with a single through-going fault that conserves displacement across the region, or are we looking at discrete fault segments? Having established that pattern, we can ask ourselves, are we dealing with right-stepping or left-stepping geometries? And then finally, we need to consider the kinematics on the faults. Are we dealing with left-lateral or right-lateral behaviours? And it's the interplay of those three factors that gives rise to the structural styles associated with the strike-slip faults. So we've seen how mountains and basins can be related to jogs and relays to go with the sense of slip on major strike-slip fault zones.